Hello, I'm Rosemary Rogers, an independent specialist nurse consultant in ear care who is completing a doctoral degree about earwax accumulation. This presentation is provided to increase your awareness of current good practice in ear care. For the past 22 years, I've written ear care courses for healthcare workers and audiologists, established a national primary ear care centre, provided an ear care consultation service, and taught clinical staff from around the world. Ears and communication are a very important part of living. You also can make a difference to the quality of life of people by considering the person with the ear problem and by using procedures available in the primary setting so preventing unnecessary referral for secondary care. Who are these people with ear problems? You see them every day. They are people who struggle to hear conversation, who misunderstand the spoken word, whose hearing aids are whistling, who withdraw from conversation and sit alone. Their hearing problem is frequently caused by an accumulation of earwax or a minor ear infection in the external ear canal and it could be easily resolved by following a procedure that can produce immediate relief. Ear problems are found worldwide and can be caused not only by accumulation of earwax but also by any or a combination of the following. Genetic makeup, age, skin type, anxiety, stress, medication and lifestyle. Lack of knowledge about ear care causes people to search for remedies for their blocked ear problems. Many of the ways they choose are not effective and may damage the skin of the ear canal or even perforate the tympanic membrane. Here are some facts about the external ear canal and earwax which is produced in the first third of the ear canal. This canal has a self-cleaning mechanism that mobilises the earwax out of the canal to be wiped away during normal washing. The ear canal bends where the cartilage and bony areas meet, so it's important to straighten the ear canal prior to viewing or treating the ear. This will be demonstrated later in the DVD. Excess sticky wax may accumulate and block the ear canal, while excess dry flaky wax and dry ear conditions can cause irritation in the ear. A small amount of ear wax at the entrance to the ear canal helps to lubricate the skin and is beneficial in reducing dust entering. Water trapped behind the plug of ear wax in the ear canal is frequently the cause of ear infections as bacteria can thrive in warm, dark, moist conditions. Ears that are prone to infection should be kept dry Older people's ceruminous glands produce less sebum, an oily substance, and hence they have drier, harder earwax, which is slower to migrate out of the ear canal. Excess earwax in younger people may be related to an hereditary problem. Anxious and stressed people often produce wetter wax. The problems caused by excess earwax are discomfort, deafness, itchiness, tinnitus, vertigo, an irritable cough caused by pressure on the cough reflex nerve in the inferior ear canal. These problems are exacerbated by attempts at self-clearing the ears. The associated hearing loss may cause frustration, stress, social isolation, paranoia or depression, where the person has other health issues such as physical, mental or learning difficulties or a language barrier in understanding, the basic difficulties become accentuated. A person who wears hearing aids and produces excess earwax requires regular earwax removal as earwax is the cause of 80% of hearing aid repairs and it can also cause an acoustic feedback whistle which reduces hearing ability. All these people will require early external ear canal clearance in order to maintain their quality of life. Clearing the earwax is only necessary when it causes a problem or if it's impossible to correctly examine the ear. All these people may have similar earwax problems but require different approaches to resolve the ear problem. It's important that those offering ear care are also skilled communicators and can advise on future ear care of the ears and prevention of ear problems. It has been shown that by using an olive oil spray immediately prior to treatment, the health worker can easily remove the wax. This is preferable to exacerbating the hearing loss through extending the time the person is deafened by instilling drops over many days, some of which can cause irritation of the skin, prior to clearing the ears. 
The alternative secondary treatment is to remove the wax by microsuction, which generates noise levels up to 120 decibels. In the past, there was only one method of clearing wax from the ear canal that treated all people. The manual plunger syringe has been used since the 16th century AD. This continues to be the method still used in many countries. Evidence that use of this type of syringe caused damage to ears included permanent tinnitus, perforation of the tympanic membrane, deafness and chronic infection, leading to litigation was recorded in a survey conducted by the Medical Defence Union in 1997. The manual plunger syringe is no longer accepted as a method of ear care. The ear canal can now be safely and easily cleared by a suitably trained health worker or audiologist wearing a headlight and using a combination of instruments and irrigation. Irrigation should be performed using an electronic variable controlled pressure irrigator which is research proven for use in ears and complies with the required medical devices standards. The electronic irrigator is designed to be used in conjunction with other instruments and not alone. Improved ear care treatment is also enabled by the health worker or audiologist knowing each patient's past medical history and previous ENT problems or surgery, any allergies and present prescriptions for anticoagulant drugs. This safe, comfortable and effective method of ear care will now be demonstrated for you. This is what the electronic irrigator looks like, which is used in this short DVD. The cleaning guidelines are explained in the instruction manual, which comes with the machine. Each day before use, the ProPulse electronic irrigator must be decontaminated using appropriate solution. In this instance, chlorclean tablets have been used according to the manufacturer's guidelines. The tank has been filled with approximately 500 ml of tap water which has been run through for 10 seconds. A tablet is inserted into the solution with the practitioner wearing a glove. The lid is then replaced on the machine and the tablet left to dissolve. This takes approximately three minutes. Once the tablet has dissolved, the decontamination solution is run through the tubing all the way to the tip. The decontaminant solution is left in the machine for approximately 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, the solution is then discarded in a sink and the container completely rinsed out with warm water. Once the container has been rinsed out and the tap has been running for more than 20 seconds, approximately 100 ml of warm water is inserted into the tank and this is replaced onto the ProPulse electronic irrigator. The machine is then ran through, ensuring the warm tap water washes all the decontamination solution from the electronic irrigator. Once the solution has been removed from the irrigator, the tap water is emptied out and the machine is completely dried. This is now ready for use. After introducing herself to the patient, the trained practitioner asks them about their reason for attending the appointment, their medical history, including any medication they may take, and problems they have had with their ears will be asked and then documented. The trained practitioner will carry out ear examination using the oroscope. The skin around and behind the ear will be examined and the trained practitioner will establish the intervention that will be required with regards to the ears. This will be based on the clinical judgment of the practitioner, the patient's need and local guidelines. In this instance, the trained practitioner 
has established that the patient has wax which will be best removed using the electronic irrigator. The trained practitioner will then explain to the patient how the procedure works and ensures that she has valid consent in order for the procedure to be carried out. If the patient has had complications with irrigation with water in the past, then the procedure should not be carried out. If the patient has a history of a middle ear infection or otitis media in the last two months, irrigation should not be carried out. If the patient has undergone any form of ear surgery, apart from grommets, that have been extruded at least two years from the ear canal, this does not include cosmetic surgery to the pinna. Irrigation with water should not be carried out. If the patient has a perforation of their eardrum or there is a history of a mucus discharge in the last two years, irrigation with water should not be carried out. If the patient has a cleft palate, whether it has been repaired or not, irrigation should not be carried out. If there is evidence of an acute otitis externa or external ear canal infection and there is pain and tenderness of the pinna, irrigation with water should not be carried out. The trained practitioner has ensured there are no contraindications to irrigation and valid consent has been obtained. With the practitioner and the patient sitting at the same level, the waterproof shoulder cape is applied around the patient's neck to ensure they will be kept dry from water and debris. The practitioner uses the headlight to ensure full visibility of the ear canal while the irrigation procedure is being performed. Using tap water and ensuring the temperature is at 40 degrees Celsius, after 20 seconds of running the tap water, approximately 700 ml of the warm water is inserted into the reservoir. The practitioner pours water onto their finger to ensure the water is warm enough for the procedure to be performed. A new single-use QRX tip is removed from the packaging, the collar is pushed back and the tip is securely held in place when the collar is released. The machine is turned on and the pressure control set to minimum setting. Using the foot pedal to start the flow of water, the practitioner and the patient using their finger ensure they are comfortable with the temperature of water and the noise of the machine. The patient is asked to sit sideways on the chair so they can lean on the chair to be able to comfortably hold the newt tank in place under the earlobe. Always using the headlight to aid the visibility of the ear canal, the practitioner holds the irrigation handle across the palm of their hand and they introduce it to the entrance of the ear canal. After irrigating the ear for 10 seconds, the practitioner stops and questions the patient that they remain comfortable and do not feel any water at the back of the nose or throat. As the patient is comfortable, the practitioner continues the procedure, straightening the ear canal by holding the pinna up and out. With the handle pressed against the tragus and water flowing along the posterior wall of the ear canal, irrigation is continued. Using the headlight, the practitioner sees that the wax is coming towards the entrance of the ear canal and they will now be able to appropriately use the wax scoop to remove the wax. Using a tissue to dry the entrance of the ear canal, the practitioner removes a new disposable scoop from the bag. Straightening the ear canal and with the headlight for visibility, the wax scoop is inserted into the ear canal and the wax is removed. This has reduced the length of the irrigation procedure and also improves patient comfort. Drying the entrance of the ear canal, the practitioner will now need to perform oral toilet to remove all the water from the ear canal. Using cotton wool approximately the size of a postage stamp, the nurse teases the cotton wool apart and inserts the serrated end of the wax scoop onto the cotton wool. 
Once the cotton wool has been tightly mounted on the serrated end of the wax scoop, it is inserted to the entrance of the ear canal and using a gentle rotary motion of the scoop, water left pooling within the ear canal will be absorbed back by the cotton wool. Once the cotton wool is wet, it should be discarded from the scoop and the practitioner is re-examining the ear to ensure all the water has been removed from the ear canal. There is no wax or debris left within the ear canal and the patient has a normal tympanic membrane or eardrum. The result of this procedure will be documented according to professional guidelines. The trained practitioner is then advising the patient on how to take care of their ears. They will be advised to keep their ears dry from the entry of water for a minimum of five days after irrigation. In order to do this, they can use a small amount of cotton wool which has been coated in petroleum jelly and this should be inserted at the entrance of the ear canal. This will help to protect the ears from any entry of water. The patient will be advised not to insert any implement in their ear which could cause damage to the ear canal or eardrum. The patient is also recommended to attend a trained practitioner for ear care and a further ear examination in approximately one year. Any further wax buildup can be removed before it becomes a problem for the patient. The patient is also given written guidelines on how to take care of their ears and this full procedure will be documented according to professional guidelines. The reservoir is removed from the irrigator, all the water is discarded and the reservoir is completely dried using a lint-free cloth. The lid is also completely dried. The handle is then shaken to discard any excess water which is left within the tubing. The irrigator itself is completely dried and the handle replaced back in the holder. Once the machine is completely dried, the reservoir can be replaced on the machine with the dry lid on top to be stored until the next patient requires irrigation with water. You have seen the current practice of excellence in earwax removal and we are sure that you will now have increased safety in mind and a vision of how your practice can be enhanced. By caring for the person with the ear problem rather than just the ear, your future practice will be rewarding for both you and your patients and improve the quality of life for many people. The benefits of encouraging routine ear checks for all age groups where earwax problems have been identified has been explained. It has been demonstrated how you can make a difference in both the time and financial savings for both the service provider and patients by preventing minor ear problems becoming major problems which, will, which then will require secondary care intervention. The need for all healthcare workers performing earwax removal to be confident in practice has also been demonstrated. This can be achieved by attending excellent training in the combined use of instruments and irrigator and continuing to update learning. 